Last week was not the result we were looking for. I'll start with that. If you didn't see that episode, there are some gems in there. Go check it out. But I had a good hard look in the mirror, and I had a couple of thoughts. The first was, man, we got to work on all this. It's not great. But second thought was, how do we get this Falcons team in winning shape? And we just need more talent. And I, I look at a 24 to nothing loss, and I say, oh, we don't have enough talent. We didn't do enough offensively to stay in the game. So what can we do to improve offensively? And we have a lot of young guys in here. Of course, Algier, second year in the NFL. Bijan Robinson's a rookie. Desmond Ritter, of course, his second year in the NFL. Kyle Pitts has only a year more than those guys. Drake London as well going into year two. You know, Mac Hollins and, and Cordero Patterson are a bit older, but we need somebody that's a bit more proven. And you'd be hard-pressed to find anybody more proven in this league at this position than Julio Jones. One of the best Falcons of all time. He is one of the greatest receivers of all time. If he's not in your top five, he's got to be in your top ten at the very least. And yep, you didn't really get what you wanted out of him if you're Tennessee and you go out and sign him, right? And you didn't get what you wanted out of him for the most part if you're the Bucks. But there could still be something left with Julio. He's a height, weight, speed freak historically, and that speed has gone down a little bit. But the route running, I, I think, could still be there. We know the hands are amazing. We're bringing Julio Jones back to Atlanta. He's going to be the spark that we need. One year, 3.35 million. This is your opportunity to make an impact. And first things first, got to get that jersey number off him. Yeah, I would say that looks a little bit better. Julio Jones, back wearing number 11. I didn't even have to give it to him. He was wearing number six in free agency, right? And doesn't even seem to matter anymore. The game just knows. It knows Julio was meant to wear number 11 for Atlanta. It's good to have him back. And I realized I might have said signed for Julio with the Titans when he was traded for, you know, like a mid to late round pick or something like that. Anyway, I'm slapping the C back on the chest of Julio Jones. I, maybe it doesn't show with these new uniforms. Is that a possibility? And unfortunately for Penny Hart, he is going to be the one to get cut to make room for Julio. Is this my first time checking this out? It might be. I definitely didn't get new scouts. Maybe I, maybe I got Calvin Heath because I need defensive end and outside linebacker. Maybe I just set it up like this. I just don't really care for quarterback to get scouted. Can I move some things around? Where is wide receiver strong? In the Southeast? Okay, let me rearrange some things. Okay, it's too late to. Cool. Excellent. It's always good when scouting's not set up exactly as you want it in year one. Only maybe the most important year of the entire rebuild. We're going to try and defend the inside run against David Montgomery and the Lions. And then against the Lions defense. Deep passing. You know what? With Julio, we'll give it a shot. Also, let's do a little chase and tackle. Get some XP for Troy Anderson. See if we can't progress him a bit faster. Just I worry about doing this against Bijan, who is so good. That he's just going to be a really, really big problem to bring down. Hopefully that's not the case and we can just completely annihilate this drill. It's a great start. One more TFL cut stick here. And we missed it. I was going to say it was going to guarantee silver. Now, I mean, we're still going to get it easy. I think we're going to get gold easily. But it's going to be a little bit more tough. And then as soon as I start talking, I can't even hit anybody. I had 18,000 points and then back-to-back -back plays, I've lost points for the first time. We're to 20,000. Need to make a couple plays in a row. It's going to be really close. I need like two more plays of, of quick TFLs. Oh, that's perfect. We can do it if I make a play. 1.6 seconds. Here's a pitch. Anderson got him gold. Let's go. Just had to make it close. More entertaining. It's for content. These DB drills are so frustrating. We need a pick. Need a pick. Make a play. That might be gold. It's gold anyway. No drills available for offensive linemen is, is still frustrating. Like, you gotta have something. Like, maybe I should just do a Bijan rushing attack drill every week and just maximize how quickly we can get him to be a 99. Well, no injuries. I think that's the first week where we've had everybody healthy. 
at least you know going in we we knew kyle pitts making a return julio back in atlanta and kyle pitts actually has an upgrade so does matthew bergeron we're gonna do blocking again for kyle pitts Again, just make him a little bit more well-rounded. Still get some catching stuff going on in here as well. Plus one catching traffic. Plus two lead block is actually pretty interesting. And I'm not going to say we're done upgrading him as a run blocker. But I feel I feel a lot more comfortable about where it is after these last two times of doing it. All right, I went to see the mock draft to see just what type of players were in here. And they're trying to get me in trouble already. I don't know what type of draft move we can make here. We'll see. In the all-white uniforms for the first time, they would look bad with white helmets, though. I'll say that because everyone loves either all-black or all-white uniforms. They don't always look good. Teams get a pass just because people will always like either all-white or all-black. The all-white Bengals uniforms were awful. I don't care if you like them. You're entitled to your own opinion. The all-white looked really bad with just like the black accents they needed a little bit of orange infused in there and now when they're bringing them back they're actually doing the actual default orange helmet which is going to look so much better on the field i get it white tiger whatever it just didn't look very good it's whatever i'm fine to own my opinion and we are back at ford field in detroit michigan spent a lot of time here obviously in lions franchise in madden 22 we had a really, really awesome series. I would say probably my most successful franchise series of all time. You know, obviously it makes sense for it to scale up. Like, like Jags franchise and Desperados franchise before it would be less successful than Lions and 49ers franchise before that and Dolphins and, uh, of course, and Giants again. But I think, you know, like pound for pound, which is where I was at the time, I, I think Lions franchise was more successful than Giants franchise. That's, I think, based on my sub count, sub count? Based on my sub count at the time and things like that, I would say Lions is the most successful. Soft spot in my heart for some of these Lions, but also, you know, the guys we actually drafted, like Rashad Reese, BJ Dickerson, Derek Davidson. There's a player that we didn't get to use, Jamison Williams. Our Jamison Williams was Richie Owens. Some of you are going to know what I'm talking about. Some of you guys are new. Have no idea about Lions franchise series on the channel, probably. But uh, Jeff Okuda was actually on that team. And now playing in Atlanta. Kind of fun. The goofball, of course. And it would be nice if we had uh, Rashad Reese on this current Falcons team. You guys are saying Cordero Patterson's close. The Lions kind of have their own with Jameer Gibbs. Kind of a do-it-all guy. Great receiver. I want to say he led Alabama in receiving yards last year. He is uh, obviously very talented, but shut down completely here by the veteran Calais Campbell. Love that. Third and 13. We can safely pass commit here. They're not going to run the ball. They're actually going to run a screen. We played it pretty well, but so much space. And a really nice gain by Detroit. It's not going to move the chains or anything, but it sets up an easier field goal. And now they can take the lead comfortably, 3-0. Kind of a gimme here from the 34-yard line, making it about a 44-yard kick. And that is, or roughly, right? I couldn't see exactly what hash mark that was placed on. But yeah, it would have been roughly that, you know, between 40 and 45 yards, which is a, a significant difference. 2023 season stats not looking great so far for Desmond Ritter. There's a lot of time to turn it around. And we're going to get B. John Robinson going. We are going to be a more successful team. And I think getting Julio back here is going to be a part of that. I really do. I think his attributes still look pretty good. Obviously offers pretty great size. We have Drake London, Kyle Pitts back in the lineup. And then we're just going to check down to Drake London. Getting the ball out quickly can look a little bit dangerous. But when you trust a guy like Drake London, I think you can do that. And the trick is to not lose momentum early last week we lost the momentum battle against the Packers we were never able to get it back not a great run there from Bijan I think we hit the the acceleration just a little bit too early I don't want to run a, dry, a dive I want like outside zone here 
We don't have that in the playbook. We have no we have no time to snap the ball. We're going to dive. We're going to dive. We're going to follow Chris Lindstrom. We're going to get the first down. Or we're going to go back up the middle. A little juke to the outside. Bijan makes another one miss. Back to the inside. Bijan down the field. Touchdown saving tackle by rookie linebacker Jack Campbell. But Bijan Robinson already with one of the most electric runs of his career in week three will take another look. Juke to the outside. Speed to outrun a defender. Whoop, back inside. And then keeping up down the field for extra yardage. Even fighting through a Jack Campbell tackle for extra yards. Fantastic effort from Bijan Robinson. Sets us up with first and 10 from Detroit territory. He's going to be in the block here. And we're going to just get out of the pocket. Look for something down the field and then run with Ritter. Desmond Ritter, first down. I know we could have thrown the ball. Here's my issue there. I thought the routes were a little bit close together. I didn't feel incredibly comfortable throwing, especially with what we've seen from Desmond Ritter in the past couple of weeks. And some of that's on me. I understand that. But uh, I'd rather just take the safe, guaranteed yards as we're going to go backside. Cordero Patterson, incomplete. It just got a little bit too deep. Second and 10, we're going to run the ball. Oh, we had a really nice block there. Bijan with a broken tackle, and that should be another first down. Three rushes, 47 yards already for the rookie. Love it. I'd love to get blitz here. Nice. Oh, Drake Lennon dropped it. There is a flag. Didn't expect for that DB to come over and make a play on the ball. He's going to be coming back anyway. So, all right. Holding on Caleb McGarry, going to be first and 20. I guess I'm glad he dropped it at this point. I didn't get my hopes up. First and 20 couldn't get the ball out quick enough and I made a decision very quickly second and 20 we're caught up on Janu Smith throwing the ball at Julio go up and get it Julio Jones looking like his old self catching traffic gives us a first down 21 yards for the veteran welcome back to Atlanta Julio Jones Ritter had a man in his face pause doesn't matter Julio Jones first down little pitch Algier, get a block, speed to the outside, diving! Shut down at the goal line. Second and goal. Wow, that blocking couldn't have been worse. I believe that's the rookie out of Western Kentucky, Roderick Martin. Third and goal. I mean, they're begging for us to run the ball. They have one real linebacker in the box. Like, I see where Alex Anzalone is, right? He's off to the side. I didn't snap the ball. Ah! I let me set it up for the video let me talk let me ah Jesus all right third and goal bit of a brain fart there that slants open London popped into the end zone touchdown trusted the slant timed it up well good ball from Ritter and we are finally back on the scoreboard it's been a little bit since we had any points a really nice catch by Drake London too he knew he was going to take a shot he ate it big touchdown it's nice to have a lead again a little bit of momentum as well oh man that, that was just a little bit too a little bit too ambitious with Troy Anderson in, this, in the flat there tried to just end Jameer Gibbs career no way around it we were aiming for a, a big time force concussion that's the type of stuff that doesn't show up on the stat sheet. Troy Henderson bringing down the goofball. Jared Goff, oh, got the arrow. Was he Robin Hood? Troy Anderson taking from the rich to feed the poor, which is us in Atlanta right now. And uh, there's no one more wealthy than the goofball. That guy makes 40 million a year. I don't even think that's an exaggeration. He's making Daniel Jones money, and that's like that's tough. Jared Goff average salary 33.5. So not quite Daniel Jones money, but that makes sense, obviously. Daniel Jones, what, top two or three QB in his own division? Uh third and thirteen. Oh, uh, please don't spin us out. Please don't. Dude, they love these third down screens that result in a slightly more manageable fourth down. Jack Fox out to punt. We have Cordero back to receive. Let's make something happen. Clark Phillips out here on special teams. Give us a block, Clark. It's a nice block, actually. Not bad. We didn't really do anything with it. First and 10. Read option. Kyle Pitts with the block. That's why we upgrade the blocking for Pitts. Desmond Ritter. Nice little run. Throw it up for Julio. They left him. 
Julio against Anzalone. What are you doing? Touchdown, Julio Jones. His first touchdown back with the Falcons since what? 2019? It's been a minute. Ritter took a shot as well. That ball was a duck coming out. But a different type of bird gets into the end zone. It's not a duck. It's a falcon. That, that felt pretty forced, actually. But, wow. That was a sick play. Julio actually had three touchdowns with the Falcons in 2020, so my mistake. Okay, we got to change this up. I can't have Troy Anderson against Amon Ross St. Brown in man coverage. It's, it's better to just leave him wide open in zone, right? Are right, we doing a little blitz action. Third and three. We are pass committing. If they run, congratulations. To the flat, make a play. Just a little late, man. Just a little late. Lorenzo Carter wearing the jersey number of what overall he should be. And you jumped. You jumped. That's a 15-year NFL veteran jumping on the line. What are we doing, Calais Campbell? What are we doing? The Lions are just systematically moving the ball down the field, though. I mean, very easily. Maybe only one foot down there. Don't think the knee got down. But that was actually very close. Let's go ahead. Let's go. Let's pass commit. It's second and 10. They're not in a hurry to move the ball down the field. They don't have to be. Oh, that's just going to be... T that's just a tough matchup. Troy Anderson did his best, though. Forces the incompletion. It's going to be third and 10. I do want to send five. Let's send five. Not more than five. But five is a good number. Arnold Ebicady holding up in man coverage is going to be tough here on David Montgomery. It's actually going to be a screen, and it's going to be an incompletion. We forced the football out so quickly because of the pressure. Full momentum for the Falcons. Detroit's going to get another field goal on the board. It just doesn't particularly matter at this point. We're doing what we need to do. Scoring a touchdown every time we touch the ball on offense, although it's, it's very early. I recognize that. And... If we can hold the opposing offense to a field goal every time, you like our chances to win the game. It doesn't mean we're going to, but you like them. Bijan, four touches in this game, 44 yards. I like that. We're not really forcing him the ball, and we're not forcing runs on first down. And I think I kind of had been doing that. And I do like the idea of running on first down, but it's not going to be, like, the only thing we do. For Daryl Patterson down the field. I wasn't looking at the corner to start. Might have been a touchdown if we got the ball out earlier. For Daryl Patterson wide open. I don't know what the coverage the Lions are doing in this game is. And obviously, you know, they're mixing it up with, with cover one and cover three, cover four, probably cover two, even though I don't, don't remember that being called. And uh, I'm not talking about that. I'm, I'm saying they're covering nobody. First and ten. Down the field. Julio! Would have been a big play. Emmanuel Mosley with the knockout. We needed that ball to come out and just be flatter. Ah! Just needed... I wanted Julio. I wanted Kyle Pitts. It just wasn't going to be open in time. You got to have that mental clock to know, hey, you can't keep holding the football for this long. Bijan was opening up in the flat. We should have just checked down. Instead, taking the sack. Third and 20. Going to be a lot tougher to move the ball. We're going down the field. They left Cordero Patterson! Thank you! Why did he just leave him? We gotta see another look at this. Another huge play for this Atlanta offense. Cordero Patterson again. Two catches for 73 yards. It was running with Patterson and then he just thought about helping on the boundary. That's a veteran corner too. That's, that's not Frank Darby. That's Ronald Darby. He's been good in the league. Just completely left the seam. And gave us a free play. Huge, huge first down on third and basically impossible. As Bijan caught from behind. Second and eight. Gun empty. Ball's going to come out quickly. No way around it. We cannot just hold on to the ball and get sacked. There's Cordero. Broken tackle. Diving end zone. Touchdown. Cordero Patterson is the spark plug. I said that about Julio, but Patterson's making play after play after play. His new role, he's getting adjusted to it very quickly. That was a nice ball from Ritter. And Cordero just kind of shoved off that first would-be tackler, then extended the ball over the goal line. Tried to dive. He says, nah, I don't even need to. It's 21-6. to 
What a performance from this Falcons team. No slider change. Obviously, it's still default all Madden. Uh, we're just playing a lot better in this one. And it, it really just has to be said, the Lions are playing worse. The Packers were on steroids last game. I don't know if there's like a dynamic difficulty because we got smashed in the last one. This has just been way easier. I don't really feel like I'm doing a ton of things differently. It's just we have a second to throw the ball sometimes. And uh, Ritter's been more accurate. It's just bizarre. Offensively, I mean, they're still moving the ball at a crazy rate. As Ritter's going all the way down. The, not Ritter. Goff's going down the field and it's completed. It's the ultimate deep threat. Jamison Williams down the field. Richie Grant is just not fast enough. Jared Goff off his back foot. Just as I was saying, it's been easier. Goff's like, you sure about that? Sure about that? Huge play. Jesse Bates does nothing on this team, by the way. I don't know what he's good for. What are we paying him for? Genuine question. First and goal from the two. It's a run. We filled it perfectly with Ellis. Calais Campbell is there as well. Gibbs really struggling on the ground. Three rushes, negative four yards. We've seen David Montgomery a little bit, and this is where you'd want to bring him in, so they bring him back out onto the field, running out of the I form. Try to get over there. Richie Grant, what a tackle. While getting blocked, manages to solo tackle a big, tough-to-tackle running back in David Montgomery, and suddenly it's third and goal. Still have to be aware of the run here, but I'm also ready to defend the pass right up the middle. I should have tried to get to that. Touchdown, Jameer Gibbs. They were going to find it eventually. That was just... The field positioning was way too good. Field position. All right. Lions, first touchdown of the game. Going to be 21-13. We'll have less than a minute, but three timeouts to get into field goal range. I think that's doable. Third and seven. We'll see what gets open here. We're just going to check down to Kyle Pitts. Turn up the field. We actually got out of bounds. That stops the clock. Still have three timeouts. Haven't called one of them yet. Just because I didn't know how feasible it was to get into field goal territory. Or field goal range, right? Because we don't just want to call timeouts and then punt. Go three and out. I like that from Kyle Pitts. I don't like that, though. You got to catch the football. Jonu Smith wheel here could actually be amazing. Just, I mean, just held it for way too long. Just stupid. Just stupid. Ah! It's always when I try to get too greedy. Just got to take what's there. And they, they played that well. Pitts, stay on your feet, dude. Timeout, Detroit. We really needed to get points on this drive. Would have been nice. Doesn't end up happening. We'll punt. Should be a good one here from Bradley Pinion. It's looking like, I was going to say coffin corner, but it's unfortunately returnable. But the Lions won't try anything with a bad return. We will head to the second half. Up 21-13. It's nice to have the lead, but the momentum factor sliding back towards the middle, which is not what we want, obviously. So we're going to try and just keep our foot on the gas pedal. Keep rocking. Trust Bijan a little bit. 77 rushing yards in this game total, but not all of that is Bijan, of course. So we're going to keep on rocking. We're going to see what we can do. I like where we are right now, but we cannot let this one get away. This is looking up to be our first win of the season. We cannot let it slip away. Okay, second and in inches. Let's get Bijan the football. We're just going to take the first down there. We don't have to do too much. And Drew Dahlman's injured. That's not great. Second and three. We're going to catch him off play action. Who wants to get open? Down the field. Right there. Julio taking a big hit. Surviving. Holding on. Nice enough throw from Ritter, by the way. There is an injury. No. 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 Why, Julio, dude? That's the season. It's over. <laughs> we finally are playing well. Do you think it's a mystery that it's Julio Jones helping us do it? Get to the outside, Bijan. Dead leg. See ya! Bijan first down. He's having a fantastic game. Nine rushes, 71 yards. Where was this a week ago? Packers completely shut it down. We're going to err on the side of caution with Julio. And, uh, of course, with Cordero Patterson, it's not a problem. We'll just keep him out there on the field. And I want to get Kyle Pitts involved. Not enough time. Desmond Ritter, 10 for 16, 225 and three touchdowns. Let's not count how many of those are just blown coverages and, and missed assignments. But we're going to think positively. Ritter's having a great game. Going to the end zone. Whatever. Pitts! Mismatch! Caught it! 
didn't get the feed in. All right, that was an insane process, but it almost worked. Third and 10, someone do something. Kyle Pitts, be that someone. Nope. Hand stuck out. Is that Brian Branch? Is that who that's supposed to be? Does not look like Brian Branch. Rookie nickel star type player for the Lions. See if he ends up playing any safety. But yeah, studded Alabama. And you can say that about a lot of players in the league. Young Wayaku's kick is good. Extends our lead a little bit. Obviously not the result we were looking for. But kind of uh, shit the bed a bit in the red zone there. Better than throwing a pick. Better than turning over the football. We got kind of close. Not going to lie. Got a little bit too crazy. Over the middle, Jared Goff on third and five is just going to throw it away. Which is not what you want to do on third down, by the way. Take a risk. Third down is when you try to push the ball down the field. If it's an arm punt, whatever. There's almost no reason to throw it away on third down like that. You, you got to try something. We'll take the punt, though. I'm not complaining. Just a bit of a mental error there from Jared Goff. And they have two guys in the A-gap. Double mug look. We're going to run to the outside on it. We got decent blocks. Bijan Robinson, another gain of 10 plus. He's averaging over eight per carry right now, 10 for 83. The blocking has been the biggest difference. Yeah, Bijan's great when we can get him in the open field. He's magical, no question. But last game, we couldn't get him in the open field. It was a disaster. This game, I mean, it's night and day. Let's go down, Cordero. Keep forward progress, please. We are really crushing it with these outside runs. Duke back inside. Bichon speared. Spear. First down anyway. Second and four run. Good block. Bichon one-on-one. -on -one. Make a miss. Probably went the wrong way. The blocking has just been spectacular in this game. Oh, Bichon getting into it. I don't think you'll ever see that from Bichon Robinson. Maybe I'm wrong. Tom, his whole career at Texas. The guy's just, he's way too level-headed and uh, composed. Good throw, please. Patterson, sideline. Nice. More Bijan. More Bijan. He will walk into the end zone. Touchdown, Falcons. Are we got a little dance routine going on, maybe? No, Bijan just letting him know. High fives all around for the boys. Also, the fact that the high five was invented in the 1970s, I can't even wrap my brain around that. Just doesn't really even make any sense to me. Like, how? How? That just seems like something that's been around forever. But, like, even hello, a weird tangent. That's just, welcome to the channel. But even the saying hello, that seems like, oh, that's been around for billions of years. <laughs> All right, maybe not that long. But no, when the phone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell, they wanted a, a saying when you picked up the phone. I forget what the first one was. It didn't work out. But they ended up settling on hello. So before the phone was invented... People just weren't saying that. It was like top of the morning and shit. I don't know. 31-13. Inverted scores here in Detroit. Lions going to need something quick. And they've kind of been doing that the whole game. AJ Terrell. Nice rap. That's what I said upon my first time listening to some Eminem tracks. I was <laughs> trying to be as corny as possible. Play action. Don't go deep. He's going deep. AJ Terrell, make a play. Make a play. Terrell got hands on. Incomplete. That really scared me. Jamison Williams is over 100 yards receiving today. A lot of that did come on one play, but it is true. Got to be worried about him. Third and seven. Oh, no. Don't check down. He's going to check down, but he threw it away. Do they punt? I think they have to in the third quarter here. Yep, they're going to. Do we have blockers for days? Look at Drake London. It's just 10 yards every time with Bijan today. This is such a nice change. Play action. Linebackers didn't bite on it. Little touch pass over him. Beautiful Drake London. It was a bullet, but it's like, not what I'm trying to do. I'm just not good at it. I, I don't know how to throw a touch pass. You guys have told me. I, I, I don't get it. I'm just too stupid. That's just got to be the answer you guys accept. I'm too stupid to figure it out. All right. First and 10. Please blitz. Bijan's wide open. Got him on the wheel. Easy first down. I'd love a touchdown on that, but it just wasn't in the cards there. Now we're going to attack him single high off play action. For Daryl, down the field, intercepted. Ah, I was so perfect today. Cam Sutton with the takeaway. Just 
got a little bit too risky in that spot. I saw it. Thought we had the touchdown anyway. Yeah, I mean, I might do it again, just maybe in a different spot. We are up 31-13, so it's a little bit more acceptable. But that's just kind of where you have to run the ball and, and just run the clock out, I guess. Nice drop, idiot. Robert Tunyon wearing number 18 is bizarre. Make a tackle, please, Jesse. So, I don't like it. They're like a play-action bomb away from getting six points on the board instantly. Oh, and Troy Anderson's jogging to the locker room, so he's done. Smith going to check into the game. Zach Harrison playing off the ball. We have defensive ends out at linebacker. This is not what you want out here. Unless they're running the ball, in which case it's exactly who you want out there. That'll work. Shoulder strain. We're going we're gonna, to, again, err on the side of caution with the lead here. Entering the fourth quarter. He'll be back on the field when he's ready. We have 156 rushing yards. Also 270 through the air. We've crushed it. Again, definitely some blown assignments in the secondary for Detroit today. But we've just played fairly well as well. So I think, you know, it kind of goes both ways. They're trying to make the comeback. They're going to have to do a little bit more than they're doing right now. I'm comfortable with the pace. But it's not going to get them back in the game. Although that's a first down. Oh, that's going to be way too open. Amon Ross St. Brown is not a name we've called a lot in this video. And I'm happy about that. It means we shut him down pretty much. Although Jameson Williams is at a big game. I'm not sure where the other passing yards have really come from. But they've, they've, they've had quite a few. Jared Goff has played well for the most part. And it's going to be a lot of Amon Ross St. Brown, I think, here in the fourth quarter. Although he's a little bit slow to get up. Dude, keep him, aim for the knee. Brady Jarrett is injured. I definitely hit Jared Goff late on the play. But uh, David Onyemata going to check in. We're actually not especially deep on the interior. Of the, or we're not especially thin on the interior of the defensive line this year. It's not amazing. Bruce Sternum is uh, going to take Grady Jarrett out. Okay. Six rushes, zero yards, and a touchdown for Jameer Gibbs. This obviously looks like a run. Troy Anderson back into the game. We'll see if we can shut it down. Bring Kabinda out. They're going to pitch. Get out there. We set the edge pretty well with Troy Anderson, forced him back inside. Calais Campbell was there. And they are, of course, going to have to go for a touchdown here. Fourth and three, down 31-13. to 13. If they don't score a touchdown here, it's probably over. And they're going to score a touchdown. Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, I just don't know what we could do there. We blitzed. Probably doing them a favor in the low red zone, to be honest. Got to do that less. But we we're just geared up to stop the run. They passed the ball. And it's going to be 31-20. to 20. Is Troy Anderson injured again? What could have even happened? What, was he injured jogging off after the touchdown? What is going on, dude? Oh, we have, we have Drake London down the field. And we hit him! Broken tackle! London strikes instantly! Touchdown, Drake London... It didn't even take a second to erase that touchdown. Drake London. Goes what? 80 yards? Monster play. Broken tackle. Unbelievable. Torn labrum. He's done. I, I literally was like, hey, if you're hurt a little bit, get off the field. He comes back on by himself, re-injures himself, and now injures himself significantly. Torn Labrum's going to be out for a while. That's at least a few weeks, if not most of the season. Screen, Caden Ellis shut down, but made the tackle. Okay. You know what we need to do? We need to go out and sign Deion Jones. Or, uh, Jesse Tuggle. <laughs> Is he still around? Second and 11. Goff quickly to the flat. Ellis is there. Shuts it down. That's a pick. Oh, come on. That was nearly the first easy reads of the year. It was all over it with Jalen Hawkins. Just couldn't take it away. And that was actually fourth down. You'll notice Drake London's uncovered. You'll notice that I noticed it. And you'll notice that Drake London's back in the end zone. One play, one touchdown on back-to-back -to -back possessions for Drake London and the Falcons. This was an easy game. Again, didn't change the sliders, obviously. It's default all Madden. I'm not trying to show you how good I am and how how 
I can beat the CPU. We're going for a good series here. But man, the Lions have played like absolute idiots this game. The Packers game was such a challenge at home. And I think a lot of that could be momentum based. We lost momentum early, could never grab it back. Well, has not been a problem for us here in this game. It's 45 to 20. And their coverage has just been so bad the entire game. Not to mention their run defense. That's been equally bad. Oh, that's wide open. I mean, they've proven they can move the ball whenever they want, pretty much. Goff has over 300 passing yards. They just haven't really scored that many touchdowns. And their defense has been the biggest issue for them, clearly. Oh, that The fact that that was completed is kind of insane. Third and one! Easy reads! Green eggs in hand! We're back! Mike Hughes will not be caught! Pick six for Mike Hughes! That's the dagger. It's over in Detroit. Read that the whole way. They ran curl flats. Was using Mike Hughes. He's the flat defender on that play. Goff tried to throw it instantly. Mike Hughes extends the arms. Gets the football. And then has the speed to turn it into a touchdown at the other end. Yeah. This game is done. All right, the Lions are going to try a field goal here. See if that gets back in the game. <laughs> wow, nice. 52-23. Again, I know I'm... I, I keep defending it. It's like... I'm protesting too much, but I really, I haven't changed anything. It's just, the game sometimes just chooses whether you win or lose before you kick off, I swear. And this is one of those where, I mean, this game was on easy mode. Didn't really face many troubles at all. And I'm going to call that the Julio Jones effect. We are just cruising to a win here. Three touchdowns for Drake London? Almost enough to make the thumbnail. Sorry about that, pal. Tyler Algier, I mean, can they do anything well? And this game is over. 52-23. Yeah, just a dominant performance for our first win of the year. We slightly improve to 1-2. and two. Of course, starting out 0-2 is not great. This, I think, was a winnable game based on who we were playing. The Lions took a step up last year, but they're not, you know a favorite in the NFC, and the NFC is not even particularly strong. So, you know, I think we just played unbelievably well and obviously got the result we were looking for. Ritter, 17 for 26. Five passing touchdowns to only one interception. Their coverage was just so bad. This is Offensive Player of the Week type numbers from Desmond Ritter. Rushing-wise, Bijan averaged 7.8 per carry. Touchdown, of course. Jameer Gibbs, six attempts for zero yards and a score wild receiving we allowed 173 receiving yards to jamison williams whatever i guess they we they scored 23 points it's okay for daryl over 100 yards drake london over 100 yards three touchdowns julio over 100 yards and a touchdown nobody else really did a whole lot a drop for kyle pitts two for julio and then defensively, I mean, the big news here is the big loss of Troy Anderson. Torn Labrum, going to be really, really tough. Really wanted to develop him. Seems like that's going to be tougher with him on IR. He might have to hit IR for us. Interception for Mike Hughes as well. And yeah, just what an unreal game. Love it. And Ritter with an upgrade. What's his throw under pressure here? 76. Let's do improviser. I like the improviser upgrade. Should get throw under pressure. I'd love throw in the run as well. I'd love accuracy upgrades. That's not bad. Awareness, break sack, throw accuracy mid and short, and throw in the run. All moving up gradually. I really wanted throw under pressure. Didn't get it this time around. But he could be the one. He really could be. Five weeks we're going to miss Troy Anderson. We could look for somebody else. I want to see how much of a player we're going to be in the uh, NFC South first. Panthers and Bucks starting out undefeated. It's early, I get that. We have back-to-back -back games against a weak division in the AFC South, although the Jags are getting better. I would expect to beat the Texans, we'll have to see on that. But we are turning the ship around. Panthers are 3-0, and but we'll see how the NFC South unfolds in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.